I'm starting to get little blisters. We're just gonna do what we can to stay alive. And on a random goose chase trying to find the water. Y'all, my poor socks. I don't know if I'm gonna get out of here. Guys, it's so cold and windy last night. I was in a cold pocket, so I froze. I'm so cold this morning, trying to get up and get my life together. Uh... I got a lot of condensation last night and the way that my sleeping bag don't zip. It's like rubbing against my mesh and it got my sleeping bag all wet. So I'm gonna have to figure out this situation really soon. Man, everything is so wet and cold this morning. The struggle is real. Bright side, this is the view outside my tent. All right, we're just gonna have to embrace it and just do it. I don't get as wet. Um, but yeah, I am hoping to cruise out to Island Park ASAP. <laughs> Man, this is not how I wanted to start my day. This is not. All right, I'm just gonna have to do it. Oh my gosh. Man, this sucks. Ah! Oh my goodness. Goodness, you can't even tell like what the trail is and where it's at. Lord have mercy. I guess this is why they call it the bushwhacking transition. And that water was ice cold, like my feet are freezing. My whole body's freezing right now. Oh my gosh, it's taller than me. Guys, this is not a good feeling. I just went like that way and the trees are taller than me you don't even know where you're stepping you're getting pulled every like your bag is getting stuck on everything you're tripping over every limb and i am soaked from head to toe i don't know if i'm gonna get out of here man i keep trying to find like a path of like least resistance on like where someone is wet and you literally can't see nothing like this is how is this even possible man like uh, oh i'm really frustrated yeah i wish i could have showed y'all how intense that one little section was but like everything was getting wet including my phone so i actually had to tuck it in my fanny pack and put my rain jacket over it like that was insane <laughs> like <laughs> soaking wet uh. <laughs> I have never been more thankful to see where a trail goes in my life. <laughs> Lord bless. Side note, all these wildflowers are absolutely beautiful. That just shows you when you feel like you're dying, <laughs> there's still beauty to look for. There's still good things. So if you're trying to find the good things today in the gratitude. And today is town day. Yes, the sun is coming out. Thank you, sunshine. Hey, little dude. This second bushwhacky section isn't terrible. I mean, I'm kind of going through some trees. I've had to climb sideways up mountains, but it's better than that overgrown stuff that soaks you from head to toe. So this is a little better. Still, no trail, but it's okay. Sometimes I really don't mind the like bushwhacking and create your own trail kind of thing, but it like mentally exhausts me. I feel like I use so much more mental energy trying to figure out my path and physical energy because since it's not a trail, I feel like it's more rugged and it's using more momentum to get up, which makes me more tired. And also I haven't ate that good today because it's town day and I tend to not eat that good because I don't want anything in my pack because I want town food. So the struggle is real right now. Yay, back to trail.
Whew, I made it to some dirt road walking after my crazy morning. This actually feels kind of good and the sun feels good. It's the little things, guys. It's the little things. One of my favorite things to do is when I get close to town and I start getting service is start looking at all the food places menu. <laughs> I think I've decided on Mexican. I've been thinking about it for like the past like four miles. Yeah, I think it's going to be post office and Mexican food. Humans, my heart is just so full. Um, I had the nicest people stop in and give me a ride, especially to the post office. Huge shout out, Andrea, Ashley, and Alan, and I got all the puppy loving. Oh, such good conversations, such good people. It was amazing. I picked up a resupply box I got from my grandmother. It's, so we're, we're kind of heavy. <laughs> we're really heavy. But that's okay. It was stuff that I needed. I got some winter clothes because I was like freezing last night. So this came in handy. After the post office, I also stopped at the Mexican restaurant. Y'all, I had never been to a restaurant it's so hiker friendly. It just melts my heart. I have some leftovers that I packed out. Such good conversations. I felt so welcome. They even put me by a plug so I could charge up some stuff while I was waiting. Oh, just the little things in life. And now we are back on trail, cruising out some more miles to see how far we can get today. And I hope to be in Yellowstone tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And we're going back to a trail. I was just kind of thinking how this morning I was like borderline tears. I was like throwing a fit because of all that bushwhacking in the trail. I just felt very frustrated, but this is a perfect example. Like things always work out like it's supposed to. It's crazy. It continues to blow my mind. And I feel like the more it continues to blow my mind, I'm reminded to like stay patient with myself and trust how things are supposed to work out. Sometimes it's not like how we want them to, but it all works out at the end of the day. So yeah, it's kind of cool to see the connections you can meet and how things work out. And if anything would have changed differently, then they wouldn't have worked out the way they did. So it's kind of cool just to trust the journey. I'm not even sure <laughs> what kind of trail this is supposed to be. When I uh, branched off the ATV trail, to this <laughs> yeah it's not necessarily bushwhacking because you can see the trail and there's not really a lot to bushwhack but yeah there's definitely some rocks out of place and i feel like today is also as an example of how a hiker goes through so many emotions in one day like this morning i was lost and frustrated and overwhelmed and wanted to cry and i felt like it was the end of the world and i was wet and cold then it was like by the afternoon, I was hot and thankful for sunshine. Then I made it into town. I met some really awesome people and had good company and good food and uh, soda. <laughs> it's like the little things in life. Then it's like your spirits completely turn around. Yeah, I've experienced every wave of emotion today on the roller coaster. And I think that's just a uh, huge part of a hiker's world. Especially like when you get a ride when you didn't think you would get one and save some steps. And, uh, ooh, this may look like camp. Hmm. Y'all, my poor socks. I feel a blister coming on here. We're about to take a peek and see what it looks like. But yeah, my socks are, um, uh, I think they've about had it, guys. Yeah. All right, so I did decide to call this home, but I am airing out my tent right now. It is still soaking wet. The other piece is up there drying as long as my rain, my rain gear is over there dried. I should have done this a lot earlier and not been as lazy because everything is soaking wet. Like I can't really even like put it up comfortably until it dries out, which is a shame. And I also didn't air my feet out, which is a shame too. And I am getting a major blister right here. Yeah, that's like a big blister too. Yeah. Ooh, it's tender. Yeah. It's, it's very important to dry your feet out. But I did not. And I probably shouldn't be wearing socks with holes in them. 
or better yet, shoes with holes in them too. My grandmother mailed my other shoes off today, so hopefully I'll get them within the next 100 miles, but yeah, we're going to keep an eye on this. It is sore. I was also thinking about my day today, and when I went to pick up my package at the post office, the lady was like, oh, that package got here this morning. Thank you. Another perfect example to trust the timing. I was trying to hurry up and get to town this morning, but after with my bushwhacking situation, I didn't get up when I was supposed to and all these obstacles, it didn't happen, but I was able to get my box. I met awesome people, got the perfect staff at the Mexican restaurant, like trust the timing. The timing is so important. Oh my gosh, a flat camp spot. I swear I have been surfing up my mat in my tent for probably the past like week. So I feel like, oh, it just feels so good that not everything is caving on me and falling and it's just flat and still. Day 44 was full of emotions. I was soaked, wet, cold, tripping over branches, and my pack getting caught on every limb. I was slightly frustrated and pitched a small fit. I even cried a little, but I took a moment and a deep breath. And sometimes when we slow down or even take a step back, we can see things differently and have more clarity. And that's exactly what I did. The CDT is definitely improving my creative thinking skills. Shout out to the A crew for giving me a ride to the post office where I was able to pick up my resupply box. Hiking continues to bring amazing people my way. We shared stories, hugs, and then they sent me off on my way. Hiking shows me every day how you have to take the good with the bad, and it's the bad that makes us appreciate the good even more. Y'all, I'm doctoring up that little blister on my foot, and I carry a few blister pads, and these things are amazing. I actually got them on Amazon, and I carry a few with me. Um, I feel like they help tremendously, and they stay on there longer than a band-aid. Not my favorite thing is my socks are still not dry, so I just had to put on wet socks. My dry socks have holes in them, and seeming the fact they're causing blisters, I'm wearing the wet socks. Do I have a through hiker? <laughs> yeah, I tossed and turned a little bit from all the caffeine and soda I drank yesterday in town. But that was the flattest spot I've had in days, possibly even weeks. Oh, and it was so good. I feel like it was paradise. And on a random goose chase trying to find the water. Lordy man. Some of these directions and instructions are just not on point. I've been trying to listen to, I don't hear water, I don't see a pipe. I'm reading comments that the water icon is not correct and it's actually point two, which I am point two. And then some of the comments say that it's point one off trail. I've been walking around point one off trail. I don't hear no water, I don't see no pipes. You would think there would be some sort of sign or rock herons or something. Man, I got a little bit less than a half a liter. According to the other two icons, I'm dry today. Oh my gosh, look what I just found. I just found this because I heard a very light trickle. Look at my water source up under a blowdown. All right, we're gonna fill up here and I'm gonna make some hot chocolate and then we're gonna get this day rolling. I was in a semi hurry, so I put my hot chocolate in a bottle and it feels really good on my hands. It's really warm. Y'all, I am a hot chocolate fanatic and I haven't had it in days. And little hot chocolate with some breakfast essentials. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Path of least resistant. All right, here seems like a semi-path. Looks like I may have not been the first to have to bushwhack through this. Man, once again, I'm gonna complain, but having to carry a full resupply on my back, three liters of water, and using the mental aspect of having to bushwhack my way through and getting attacked by all these dead limbs, Man, like you would think, you know, just simple, follow a trail one step at a time. Hell no, not on the CDT. It's gonna require the next level of critical thinking. Whether the blue line is wrong or it's not picking up GPS coordinates or something, I feel like it's a liability. If you tell me I should use a map and it's my lifeline, it should be my lifeline. 
but whatever. Okay, ran over, <laughs> ran over. I kind of knew this, this trail was rugged and adventurous, so we're just gonna do what we can to stay alive. Pretty sure this used to be like, I don't wanna say a creek bed, but like some sort of water thing that's been dried up. Normally, if you can follow those, you'll come out where you need to be sometimes. Don't hold me to that, but my situations of bushwhacking and getting back, it seems like you're just following an old creek bed and you're good. Oh, I think I see a road. Is this my road? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. It's my road. I just want to give Momo a huge shout out for putting hot chocolate in my recent pot box because that is probably the only thing keeping me sane right now. By the way, this is much easier walking than finding dead limbs and climbing blowdowns. Turning the tunes on and I'm jamming. Sometimes you just need a good vibe. That's what today's gonna be. Well, if those arrows aren't very confusing, I would take it to go this way. But no, we are going this way. Yeah, there's an arrow. Thanks to another hiker looking out. <laughs> very misleading. So for a little bit now on this stretch, <laughs> There's random speed bumps and ditches. So crazy. Like, what's going on here? What? But we're going around it. Y'all, and it's really curious too. My shoes are so worn out that I have like no tread on the bottom. <laughs> and I've actually, like when I go downhill, I've actually been gripping my trekking poles extra because I'm afraid I'm gonna like fall. And I'm starting to get little blisters on my hands. It's crazy. Right there, right there, right there. Normally, I switch my shoes out between five to 700 miles just because I feel like that's safe, that's a good number. Even if they had some tread and they're still good, I normally still switch them out. <laughs> this is the first time that I have worn my shoes this much. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think these suckers will make it to a thousand. A thousand miles on a pair of shoes. I don't know if I recommend it. My feet are like destroyed now, but it's kind of cool. I got my money's worth on this pair. Hello, Wyoming. It seems like the burn fields is where I struggle the most. It's kind of hot today. My pack's kind of heavy. We did decide to take lunch. So I'm doing a Santa Fe style rice chicken. It's not bad. It needs like a wrap or some Frito chips in it. My plan is to get to Old Faithful today, but we will see. It's still another 12 miles away, so fingers crossed. But I do not have a permit yet, and there's no camping between that boundary sign and Old Faithful, so I kind of have to push to Old Faithful, so got another 12 miles today. Summit Lake. What a pretty spot. That little bit of a difference of going down in elevation, I feel like you can feel dramatically. Like, whew, it feels hot. And I've been cold the past few days.
Yo, it's so crazy seeing this again. <laughs> the last time I was here and I explored Yellowstone was 2020. It smells like rotten eggs. <laughs> to see my friend Tags and Chanel. They were on uh, Highway 20 here at the Basin Trailhead parking lot. I just went through some beautiful springs. I just dropped my pack. I had a Dr. Pepper and an ice cream sandwich. Oh, I love the trail magic. And now I am heading to Old Faithful. I'm about two miles and I am walking to food. It looks like the restaurant is still open. <laughs> On day 45, I was reminded that living out of fear takes away from our highest self. It's so easy to settle or stay where we are comfortable because it's easy. Our behaviors and everything we do comes from fear. And it's easy to let fear control us and sometimes we don't even realize it. When we experience fear, it's when our brain thinks it's unsafe and will try to protect us and go into survival mode. Our brain feels safe when it's comfortable, but it takes work to train your brain to trust the unknown and that risk are actually a good thing. Living out of fear keeps you from reaching that highest self. And if you're wanting more out of life and wanting to get to that next level, you can make it happen. This is your reminder that it's okay to take the risk, invest in yourself, and give it your all. It's up to you to chase your dreams and do the inner work. And it's okay to normalize breaking the cycle of typical society. Don't let the fear or the risk of failing keep you from living your best life. You are always one decision away from a different life. I spent the morning bushwhacking and I hiked through geysers and ended up at Old Faithful where I seen four bisons ride on trail. I ended up meeting with Tags and Chanel where I was treated to a soda, ice cream, and camped at Grant Village where I got laundry and a shower.